Um, okay. So let's uh, it's let's consider a few examples now to begin with, uh, based on the current job role that we are looking for, right? It definitely mm -hmm. suits our requirement, uh, but we would like let's deep dive to whatever you said and let's try to understand uh, what we do, right? So okay. um, let's start with the build and release stuff because it looks like that's something that you do most of the case now, right? Um, mm -hmm. Now in build and release, can you specifically tell in build and release, what tools do you use? What are the primary tools that you're currently using for build and release? So primarily uh, for like uh, source code management, we'll be using GitHub. Uh, and for build purposes, we'll be primarily using we are just uh, Jenkins. So uh, that would be it. And for release purposes, uh, through Jenkins, uh, like uh, through the CD, CD process, we'll be deploying it to our AKS cluster. So primarily we'll be using Git, GitHub and uh, Jenkins for build purposes. And for deploying purposes, uh, we'll be using uh, uh, Azure Kubernetes services. We're directly okay. deploying to it. So uh, currently, if I'm not mistaken, uh, there is some code that is there in GitHub, and then you use Jenkins. Uh, you use Jenkins to deploy to Azure Kubernetes cluster. Am I right? Yeah, directly. Yeah. Okay. Very good. So let's start with uh, let, let's let's start with the uh, uh, Jenkins part now. Okay, just to understand okay. a bit better. So okay. you spoke about CD, correct? Mm -hmm. I yeah. didn't hear about CI. Is it yeah, like, something different or is it same according to you? What what is why why is there no CI currently? No no like the CI is the uh, uh, part uh, which comes before uh, CD process like. Uh, CI, CI is the process uh, uh, of building uh, the particular uh, repository or image. So like uh, the build and the, um, what to say, like a checkout process uh, right from the GitHub to building an image or a particular uh, Docker container is like a continuous integration part. And using this particular uh, artifactory or the image that we have created using the CA part and deploying it to various other environments is like a, a CD part. Very good, okay. So you have CI also, am I right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, in CI, you said you create Docker images. Am I right? Mm, yeah. Okay, very good. So, and also you said you store it in a repository. Which repository do you use to store Docker image? So currently we are using the uh, Azure Container Registry, uh, Registry to store the Docker images. Azure Container Registry. Okay, cool. So can you tell me, how do I know? Uh, okay, let's say that... Uh, you made a deployment, correct? And okay. the mm -hmm. deployment went bad for that example, okay? And you okay. want to revert it, right? Now, if you want to revert it, what do you do in this process? What is the most easiest way to revert to previous deployment? So like, uh, if you want to revert to the previous deployment means, um, so already in the Azure container industry, we'll be having in the previous version of the image that has been already built and created. So like for the um, uh, reverting process, we can just uh, pull the previous image and uh, redeploy it. We just uh, revert back to the normal state. Okay, very good. So in this case, we would have mm. to do tagging. Am I right? Uh, yeah, correct. What format yeah, before... of image tagging are you currently doing? A format will be like uh, our uh, uh, container registry name uh, slash uh, and our uh, container name slash any tagging which we want to use like uh, the version. And example? Example will be like, uh, let's just say, uh, let's just take my name as example. So my name is like uh, the ca container repository. So mm -hmm. Naveen slash and uh, the repository name. So like we'll be working on multiple projects. So mm -hmm. like for each project, we'll be kind of, uh, keeping track of a separate repository. So like Navin project one, so Navin slash Navin project one uh, and uh, colon uh, that particular uh, version which you have currently built. Colon, particular uh, version that is currently built. Currently built, it is latest, correct? Latest, latest like uh, probably we'll not be using latest as a tag. We'll be just using like a V1, V2 or V0.1, 0.2 according to the build number. What do you use currently in your work, work environment? Can you be a bit more specific here, please? Yeah, currently we are just using like a version V1 or V2, V3, V4, like the iterations. Okay. Um, do you think it's a standard or do you believe it's not the standard? Uh, like, uh, like, 
like uh, if you ask me in the devops uh, um, best practices point of view like uh, it's a good standard to follow but uh, yeah. uh, we can follow any kind of standard according to our wish but like uh, in uh, if you consider with the devops best practices uh, standard it's a good naming convention to follow Uh, okay, so if I get your answer right, uh, naming convention of V one, V two, V three is a good naming convention or a good standard. Is it yeah. is it correct assumption that I'm making from mm, your yeah. answer? Okay, yeah, fair enough. Cool. So let's uh, go to the next topic. Okay, uh, we discussed about the CI part, right? This is all CI section, correct? Yeah. I'm interested yeah. to know what happens mm-hmm. if the CI fails. Who is responsible in this case? Are you responsible? or is the developer responsible if the developer is responsible how is he getting notified and what are some of the notification tricks that they are using in jenkins as of today for build failure ci failure all different kinds of failure let's say so like uh, in jenkins we have uh, like a uh, uh, inbuilt method to send a email notification whenever a job is being triggered so let it be like a Uh, always failure case or uh, always case of failure case or success case based upon mm-hmm. the scenarios just uh, uh, make a condition to send an email to the respective user or the particular distribution list whenever a job has been triggered so like in the case of a failure so uh, most probably if uh, all the build process has been tried and tested and it has all been good means most probably um, uh, it might be some issue with the code or uh, test process so it will be falling upon with the developers Mm-hmm. So, uh, like, uh, but if on the initial stage, like the initial first uh, build stage itself, it means like uh, we need to look into uh, what happened, like what is causing the issue, whether it is to due to um, the source code is not able to be reachable to be checked out, or if there is any uh, problem in creating the Docker image, maybe there's some dependency or missing like that. So in that mm-hmm. kind of uh, process, uh, we need to be uh, looking looking into it and uh, provide an action for it. Okay. Currently, do you do that? Sorry. Currently, do you do that? Do you have a? Do you uh, have a script uh, yeah, on success on failure? Yeah, uh, email. Yeah, currently we have set up an uh, email process to be triggered whenever a job has been uh, uh, triggered. Okay. Uh, also, do you think is the best way to monitor job failures? Considering you know there is Slack today, correct? Uh, <laughs> nobody sees emails. Am I right? Or am I mistaken here a bit? no you are correct but uh, currently that is the process we are following in our thing yeah but we have uh, certain plugins we can, that we can be installed in jenkins like uh, we can just also integrate slack with also with it mhm yeah that also can be done for uh, monitoring the job profile okay cool so that leads to my second second question now right uh, which makes that jenkins setup has to be very powerful am i right it has to be very oh, strong Jenkins itself has to be very powerful, very stable, very strong. Mm-hmm. Am I right? So, can mm-hmm. you speak a bit about how this Jenkins setup is done in your company, please? So, basically, Jenkins in our company is set up as a master slave architecture, where uh, like uh, currently we uh, it has been taken care of in separate uh, team. So, like uh, we will not be accessing to the Jenkins server to run the job or anything. So as a mm-hmm. team, we are already configuring the Jenkins master and slave architecture, and they will mm-hmm. be just uh, exposing uh, the particular URL for us to access the, through some other proxy server or a jump server. So we'll be just having access to the front end uh, UI part. From the front end UI part only, we'll be creating the jobs to be uh, triggered or jobs to be run, which okay. needs, needs to be done. For me, it's a bit surprising. Uh, maybe I'm wrong here because if you are a build and release engineer. Uh, okay. according to the definition uh, you are mm-hmm. the one who is responsible for jenkins right uh, it doesn't look like the case in your existing company correct which is fine uh, just wondering uh, you know, the naming like, convention uh, of uh, job role i didn't quite uh, get your question sorry yeah so what i was trying to say is when we say build and release engineer he is more or less the person who owns jenkins correct or he is in a team that owns jenkins right uh, you said you are a build and release engineer as of now but it doesn't look like you have access and control in jenkins to do certain actions right uh, which also means you cannot set up plugins uh, and stuff like that right you need to work with someone else in this case so i wonder what's the name with build and release engineer now 
So, um, like, uh, why I said like that was like uh, in our particular uh, the organization we're working on in the particular uh, project, there are multiple teams. So, like for each and every team, if they have a separate Jenkins and uh, uh, for Jenkins server and uh, Jenkins layer server uh, provision, and uh, each uh, team is working on separate thing, there will be like multiple. Like, uh, there currently there are uh, ten teams working in our project. So, like each team will will will, will be having a separate person to manage this Jenkins. Uh, server itself so that only they have just created separate um, uh, team wherein they'll be managing everything and like these particular 10 teams will be uh, just using that particular uh, uh, ui for it so that's why uh, it's like that okay okay um yeah uh, let's speak about docker uh, docker hub then for now yeah so from your uh, previous answer i presume uh, i presume that uh, you use uh, Azure Docker repository, right? Uh, to store images, am I, uh, yeah. am I right? Yeah, Azure Container Repository. What's the choice? Why Azure Container Repository and not why uh, not choose Docker? Uh, like, why, why why do you need to choose it in Azure Container Repository? Yeah, like uh, um, basically we are uh, just uh, mainly working on Azure services. So like uh, in our company, subscription has already been bought. So like it is very easy to integrate uh, since we are already working on Azure Cloud, it is very easy to integrate uh, with the Azure Container Repository. 